Sport utility vehicles definitely get the job done and come in all shapes and sizes from small compact on up to the big boys, but the key component is really the versatility, both in hauling people and cargo, but also four wheel drive prowess. But there's one segment trying to fit in here, and that is the crossover. Hey, welcome to this edition of Road Warrior. I'm your host, Grant Robertson. Now, as of late, I've mentioned, I've driven about every crossover there is, and sometimes I have to give pause and realize, well, when you get a sport utility like this one, sometimes crossovers truly don't fit in this segment. This week's test drive is the 2019 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk Edition, pretty much screaming all SUV and well, four wheel drive prowess. Now I mentioned the crossover segment and what it's done is kind of lull me into a false sense of well, this type of vehicle and that's just not the case. Most crossovers are kind of that all wheel driveness and taking a sedan and making it feel like an SUV, but really never quite getting there. Heck, the previous long ago designs were more minivan s and geekish at best and well, they started to kind of push the envelope of design, somewhat blurring the lines. But when you get behind this and start to reminisce of, well, what a true SUV is, well, Cherokee, screams it pretty much by being able to go anywhere you want to. Now, certainly I love the Wrangler, but this might be the smoothest and next best option. Admittedly, I'm not adventurous and pretty much stick to the pavement. And that's why Jeep Wranglers are kind of overkill for someone like me. Now, certainly I like how they have grown into four doors, have a lot more refinement on the inside, but they're still Jeepish at heart. What I'm referring to is rough around the edges. Now, they certainly will feel at home in the sand, in the woods, whatever, but they're just still rough when I typically drive them on the pavement. And for this Jake from State Farm wannabe, well, I prefer a little bit more refinement, hence the Cherokee. Now, what the Cherokee does well is really smooth out the bumps. Never once did I kind of ruffle my feathers and pretty much handled the pavement with ease right down to the potholes and never did I spill my coffee. Now, what I also like is the numbers this vehicle delivers, specifically in its overall size, pretty much meaning this jungle is going to drive is called the urban one, not the well woods you see around me. Now, the overall numbers, what you're going to see is around about 183 inches, just below that for the Trailhawk, just above that for the on-road model. As for wheelbase, around about 106. And for comparison's sake, crossovers are somewhat in this uh, size vehicle as well, but the difference really is in the off-road worthiness or really getting to the snow and the thick stuff. This vehicle has that four-wheel drive capabilities, similar and just like the Wrangler. Now, other numbers to think about really is ground clearance. This vehicle easily clearing around about 8.7 inches. Again, crossovers, well short of that. And the other big number that is delivered is at the four corners. Crossovers, just kind of the old status quo when it comes to tires, not on this vehicle. 245, 65s in the front, 245, 55s in the back, wrapping a 17 inch wheel. One thing the Cherokee can't do is blend in with the masses. And if you look over at the crossover segment, well, they're all caricatures and copycats of one another. If you look at the modest sized SUVs like this, well, they're all chiseling and adorning themselves and just again, look cookie cutter. So what the Cherokee did well is stand out on its own. And after all, it comes from a great family line, the Wrangler pretty much keeping to the same silhouette that we all have come to know and recognize to the Cherokee definitely following that lineage. And where you see it is in the profile. Now, this vehicle truly reminds you that it can do anything you throw at it. First off, again, with those beefy tires, but this lower third, which is just a signature of going off-road, really helping to minimize the scrapes and dings, actually has practicality versus just looking good. Now, as for the body, pretty much nice tight lines, a midline pretty much from front to back, and no real curvaceousness, but also a key component, no chiseling. This vehicle, pretty much keeping it nice and simple and straightforward. For the Cherokee, the Sport is obviously in the ability to make this vehicle do whatever you want, but the utility side is here at the back end. Now, what I like is the ability for SUVs to truly deliver people and their cargo and crossovers try to mimic this, but they fall short when it comes to the sport side. Now, before we dive in, let's look at the design. First off, this overall spoiler that sweeps out just a little bit, giving an extension of the overall roof line, giving a nice curvaceousness when it comes to the profile, huge bank of glass, body color all the way around, nice stylizing of the rear taillights, almost segmented when it comes to the overall design. As for this lower fascia, sweeps all the way around and nice huge trailer hitch, not to mention the tow pull out there here at the back end. Now, when it comes to safety, even though this is a modest size vehicle, it still helps to help dive into the tight spots and that's gonna be with the help of front sensors and backup sensors and a backup camera. 
but most importantly is what lies beneath here now first off for this particular model it is powered just a simple push of the handle and it's going to rise to the occasion now once it gets out of the way what you're going to see is around about 25 cubic feet of space with the second row in place now with the seats tumble forward it's going to more than double to around 54. Diving into the rear car area just a little bit, what you're going to notice is a nice squared off design, really handling big packages. Now, if they are taller with this rear glass, they're going to have to slide forward just a hair about the midway point. Now, if they're just too big, obviously you can flip and fold those second row. Now, you're going to have nice anchor points here at the four corners, really handle a nice floor cargo net, put your items underneath it. That's going to keep them from sliding around. Now this vehicle simply is a nice urban dwelling vehicle, pretty much meaning it's going to be a grocery go-getter. That's going to be helpful here on the outer side with these um, bag clips to hold things in place. Nice power supply over there as well as it's nice and illuminated. Now a nice big feature, especially when you go shopping, is this feature here. Nice built-in tonneau cover. You can pull it out. That's going to lock in with ease. Now it's not rigid, pretty much means you can't put anything up here, but it truly hides everything, basically making it difficult for people to realize what's in here. Just the next security feature. Now when it's out of the way, you can remove it, but it is a somewhat big item. So preferably if you are going to remove it, you might want to just get it totally out of the vehicle. Now another big point to be made is under the cargo floor. And what you're going to see is a nice full size spare. Now, before we swing around to the good old power plant, let's talk about some simplicity on this vehicle. And it really starts with the smart key system. Now, you can interact with it. It does have a button to lower this as well as remote start and, of course, unlock and lock the vehicle. But with smart keys, you can pretty much keep it in your pocket and forget about it. Now, if you do need to interact with the vehicle, all you need to do to lower this is press the button here on the lower pillar. Press it once, lowers with ease. Now, with smart key technology, that helps with ingress. Pretty much the ability to go hands-free, walk right up to the vehicle, it knows you're there, and unlocks with just simple move of the hand. Pretty much going right here, unlocks and it opens right up. Now, the only issue here on the Cherokee that I prefer they fix is allowing that access point at the rear door doors. Otherwise, you pretty much in the rain, come up here, unlock the vehicle, then interact here. That is just one more step, especially when it's fully raining. Now, if you wanna lock it up, real simple again, just press the button right there and walk away. Now, the big story, is what lies beneath the hood. Now, I simply would expect a four cylinder and they are options, but on this particular model, it is the 3.2 liter V6. Now it's gonna deliver around about 271 horses and 239 foot pounds of torque. Now the torque was somewhat anemic and required a little bit more oomph to get this vehicle going, but it certainly delivered when it came to fuel economy, easily between 20 to 29 miles per gallon backseat drivers may be just as happy as the front especially when it comes to leg room numbers now what you're going to find back here is around about 40 inches not too bad considering the front around about 41 now what helps with overall leg room is the design of the seat packs nice and sculpted pretty much arching to help give you a little bit more breathing room when it comes to your knees now as for the overall design for the back seat well decent overall cushioning it looks standard when it comes to the overall styling with pretty much a, just a straightforward bench but nice and cushioning overall now you do have nice elbow support with this flip down center divide dual cup holders but when it is pushed back you do have room enough for three grown adults. Now for the outer positions, there is a lot more sculpting, individualized attention there on the seat backs. One aspect with backseat drivers that they really complain about is airflow. And what's helping with that is the vents here at the back of the center console. Lots of SUVs in this size just aren't delivering. They truly expect airflow to come from the front. Now, other ergonomics to really think about is chargeability. Backseat drivers want to connect, and it starts with, well, connecting and charging their phones and devices. USBs, two of them right here. Standard household outlet as well. On the dash, one of the first things you're gonna notice really is the oversized touchscreen you connect system really houses everything with ease. Now, pretty much it doesn't have the split screen like you gonna see on a lot of the competition, it really doesn't have a home screen. Instead, what you're using really is full screen, it tends to be my standard operating procedure. Now, what I truly like is the Uconnect apps, really everything you could want for the operation of this vehicle 
at your fingertips and you can bring them down here to set as your favorite. So for example, if I'd prefer to have, let's say the assist system here, I can simply hold that, drag it down, replace it with the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi goes away and now that's there. Now what I really like is the climate interaction because that really gives everything right up here. Now the climate is down below, not real hard to use, but as I'm driving, I prefer just to barely to glance away. So to bring this up makes life so much simpler. And you can also just simply change temperature with ease with the use of touchscreen as well as your shortcuts for your fan speed and the various mode selects, but pretty much everything housed under the screen when it comes to operation of this vehicle. Now, if you do want to go old school and use some of the standard uh, controls, well, first off is going to be volume and tune select over there as well. Some other functions in the middle, your fan speed here and your dual zones as well. But pretty much again, you can interact with this up above. Now, this engine does have the auto start, auto stop feature when you get to stop signs and so on. You can turn that off. A lot of some of the competition is getting rid of this button, pretty much meaning the engine is going to do what it wants. But what I prefer to do is turn that off. It just seems to be not my preference to have it on. Now up above some other features, you're going to have the parking sensors. You can turn on and off lane departure as well over here. And one nice feature is the parking assist. Now that's kind of fun to use. Now what you do is pretty much when it is activated, that's going to allow you to pretty much go into drive here, select the button, then you're going to go to the screen and it's going to show you what it's doing now obviously this is kind of typical parallel parking but you can toggle to perpendicular even better of course free advertising putting the wranglers there so you can kind of pull in between two good old wranglers and obviously as you move forward it's going to sense it and then it's going to take over the operation just simply let you utilize the brake and put it in the right gear now, if you do want to be an off-road adventurous, you do have that over here on the left side, four-wheel drive. You can simply toggle through the predefined settings, which is helpful, again, for a novice like me. Now, over here on the right, you do have USB auxiliary jack and a good old power supply. To be expected, dual cup holders between front occupants do have nice little grippers here to hold on to the drinks a little bit tighter. Nice center console. It is dual level upper portion a little bit shallow tray wouldn't hurt to put a charging wireless here just to be able to put your phones there now it does have the nice uh, cutouts here so your cords can run in and out of this uh, console because that's going to be helpful because down below you do have the connectivity in the form of usb and power supply as well as a deep console now one thing to note it's barely lit with those illuminators there so it's not really traditionally lit so it does get kind of dark at night for the gauge clutch, you're going to find a standard analog tack and spinorama, but a huge digital readout there in the middle, nice and colorful. Most of all is the digital readout for the speed, but you can go through various functions to get the information you prefer there. Four-wheel drive prowess is certainly something to tip your hat at and definitely comes in handy if you want to sling some mud or, well, if the snow falls and makes that trip to work a little bit more treacherous. But what I like here on the Cherokee is its next level of refinement. Basically, the ability to, well, smooth out the bumps for your daily drive. And for this city slicker, that's a key component because, after all, I don't see that much snow, nor do I want to get muddy. But I definitely don't want to spill my latte. And with the Cherokee smoothing out of the bumps, well, I didn't lose one drop of joe now other big features of course the ergonomics the cargo at the back and modest refinement here in the hood with decent pep in my step now as always like thank you for watching this edition of Red warrior keep both hands on the wheel and i straight ahead